the reason why I even wanted to make this video is just to inform everyone when they're making their used car buying decisions because it's a rough world out there and a lot of people are trying to get a little more extra dollars than they probably should be charging for their vehicles. Hey guys, my name is Karen and welcome back to Octane Street Road here on YouTube. That never ends and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to properly inspect a vehicle visually. And now there's a difference between visually and mechanically. So what I mean by visually is we're going to be taking a look at panels on the vehicle that have been repaired or repainted or replaced. Now these are three very important things because if there's multiple panels that have been replaced, then that most likely means that the car has been in an accident. And so if you're buying a used car, say a Honda Civic, and you see that the whole right side has been replaced or repaired, that's not necessarily a car you might want to buy. Or if you still want to buy it, then at least pointing those things out to the seller can get you a pretty hefty discount as long as you know you could kind of prove it and so to help me prove that today i have three tools with me however none of them are necessary but i would highly suggest picking them up because not only do they last a lifetime they're also extremely cheap i'll have links down below in the description uh not a sponsor by any way shape or form but these are just three tools that i use in my daily life as an apprentice mechanic so to start off the first tool we have here is a paint gauge now what this tool does is when you tap it on a metal surface it'll actually read out to you in millimeters the depth of paint or rather the coats of paint on that surface now it only works on metal surfaces so aluminum steel iron things of that nature so if you're going to uh, try and use this on a plastic panel I know BMWs have plastic uh, vendors if you try and uh, scan that with this tool it's not going to work and it's instead it's going to give you a little error code so again what this does is it reads out the paint depth or paint coats to you in millimeters I'll explain why this is important later but for now that's essentially what this tool does it does use two AAA batteries in the back here but once you put two batteries in it's good to last you at least a year assuming you don't use this every day like I do at my job the next tool here that we have is one that you're probably more familiar with it's actually just a little tire tread depth gauge which essentially once you put it into one of the treads of the tire is going to read out to you how many millimeters of depth that tire has left and what this is useful for is say for example you find that the car you're looking at looking to buy has very low tread on all the tires that's kind of going to show you a little bit of how the previous owner or the seller has taken care of the vehicle because if you really take care of your vehicle then you're going to want to make sure you're riding on some pretty slick and brand new tires and what i mean by slick is at least not let your tires go bald so this is going to be a pretty good indication as to how the previous owner left the car or took care of the car as well as give you an idea of if you're getting some good tires with the car or will you have to buy new ones lastly we have here a tire pressure gauge now what this does is once you put this little end in on the stem the tire valve you're, it's going to give you a reading in psi up to 50 on this one a very cheap tool but it's very useful because it's going to let you know how much air is in the tire or in all the tires and again that's important because if it's very low or below the recommended by the factory then it's kind of going to give you an idea again of how the previous owner was taking care of the vehicle with that being said we're going to get straight into the inspection and the first tool I'm going to be showing you guys how to use is the paint gauge. Alright, so the first thing you're going to want to do is actually pop the hood. I'll explain why later, but most commonly you could find the hood latch right under around here and right there. Okay, so normally it's right here. Sometimes it'll be inside here. Sometimes on Mercedes it's really far down, but that's essentially where you'll find the hood latch. So you, after you pop the hood, you can start on any panel you want. It'd help a lot if you had a friend with you, maybe keeping track of all the damages you find. So you could just do your job and investigate the vehicle. So I'm going to start at the left front door since I just popped the hood. I closed the door and we're actually going to be using the paint gauge. So if you come in closer a little bit, so you just hold it on there for a second. It's going to give you a reading in milli millimeters. So five millimeters is actually the standard that a lot of vehicles and manufacturers use. Anywhere between four and five is usually a healthy spot. I know some Mazdas and Toyotas like to go a little bit lower and use 3.5 milliliters millimeters of paint depth. Um, but around that range is where you're you're most likely going to want to be even on high-end cars It doesn't matter uh, That's still where usually most of them are unless you're talking Maserati then they like to go a little bit higher All right, so we scanned the, the door and it read five millimeters now You might be asking yourself. So what if I don't have the paint gauge? What if I, I can't afford it or I don't have access access to that paint gauge where, where I live then what you can do is actually first off visually look at the door, okay? If the paint looks okay, use your judgment. Look all around, see kind of how all the panels look, and see if all the look relatively the same or not. Now, I can already tell you this guy standing here at the first glance of the car by looking at that left front fender. 
here. Um, it's very, very off in terms of me. I can tell completely that it's really good. show you guys essentially what you do if you don't have the pain gauge you're gonna take your nail and a little bit of your finger okay you're just gonna rub it gently on the side here okay and you're gonna see if it feels rough now no matter what car you're buying fresh out the factory the paint here is gonna be really 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 nice and smooth no matter if you're buying a Toyota a Maserati a Mercedes BMW no matter what you're buying from factory this paint is gonna be really really smooth and even though this is a 2004 vehicle this vehicle feels really, really smooth on this left front door. So that's really good news. I could tell already by feeling it that it's not repainted. However, that does not mean that it's not replaced. So what you want to do, if you want to see if the, the door has been or any panel has been replaced, is you're going to check the bolts. So let's go ahead and get a closer look on the bolts. Now those are a little bit hard to see. Open the door gently as much as it can. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to try and get a close shot of these bolts right there so those two up top and there's going to be two more at the bottom just like that so the bolts you're looking at are these ones right here and you're going to see if they look like they've been um taken off with a wrench or a socket of any kind and these ones actually look pretty mint now i see many different cars every single day at the job that i do and i see a lot of bolts as you can imagine these ones look very very clean so good stuff to the owners of this vehicle again my friend and yeah so this door is completely safe this door nothing happened to it it is a little bit scratched but we're not going to be looking at scratches and dents today because that would take a whole long time so today again we're only looking at repaired rep repainted or replaced panels all right so you scanned your first panel you got a number on the paint gauge now you want to know if it's exactly normal for the car well the best place to check on any vehicle to see if it's around where the car's paint level should be is to check the roof. Now, on some vehicles, this can be a little bit difficult if they have a panoramic roof or a very large sunroof, which essentially is what a panoramic roof is, uh, because there's gonna be a lot of plastic and glass up there, which again, this only works on metal. So, this one thankfully doesn't have a panoramic roof, so we can test the roof, and I'm gonna go ahead and test the roof, but odds are it's gonna be really close to this door panel since we already checked it, and it's completely clean. So let's go ahead and give it a test. And just like that, it's 4.5. So the range where you want all the panels to be within is about one millimeter, okay? So that means if you scan a panel and it's 4.5, you kind of want your other panels to be around 4 to 5.5 somewhere in that ballpark means okay it could become it could come from factory because even though these cars are manufactured in factories it doesn't necessarily mean that they're all going to come up with the exact amount of paint coats on each single panel they're doing thousands of these cars and so the chances are they're not all going to be perfect they are going to be close which the roof and this door is so anything around the roof is going to be good so the roof was 4.5 millimeters so if we get numbers around there all across the car we're looking good with that being said we're going to move on to the fender now and scan that so this one here 6.5 a perfect example of what you want to watch out for so this door we got five the roof we got 4.5 this one although i can visually tell uh that it's repainted we got a scan that also implies that this this panel has been repainted over. Now, just because the panel's been repainted doesn't mean that it also hasn't been replaced. This might be a completely brand new bumper that the owner had to buy previously and they had to paint it over to match the car. Because whenever you buy a, st uh, a factory part for your vehicle, it doesn't come painted. You always have to get it in like some black color or something like that, or just a straight up steel or whatever color, aluminum. Um, and so yeah, you're always gonna have to paint it. So we're gonna get into that very shortly, but for now, I already know this panel's been tampered with. And again, you can use your finger to double check if you want, use a little technique. You're always gonna wanna go in the corners of the panels. And the reason why that is, is because whenever they're getting a paint job done to them, they're actually, the, the people who are painting them aren't gonna take the time to bend around each little corner and crevice and get the paint in there all nice and neat. So that's why on those corners, on those edges, it's gonna be a little bit rough because they're not taking the sweet time to, to get those spots really well. So that's why I could even tell 
very clearly with my with my nail and my finger that this panel is definitely been repainted if you guys want more information on how to tell for repainted or replaced panels even for dents and scratches leave a like below this video and i'll go ahead and do a video on that as well and it never hurts to leave a comment either so with that being said we're moving on to the hood now now before we actually lift up the hood what you're going to want to do is scan it so we got 6.5 here as well and if you guys are paying attention you already know that what does that mean i don't know i'm the audience well that means that it's not good news because that panel which has been tampered with and we have already declared has been repainted was reading the same number as that which means that this hood is most likely also repainted unfortunately but the other thing we're going to check out before we open up that hood is actually the right fender so this fender gave a 4.5, which is right exactly at what the roof was. So that fender looks good for now, but that's where it could get scary because that might be a replaced fender. So now we're going to actually open up the hood and check a little bit further. Okay, so the first thing you're going to actually want to look at under the hood are these bolts right here. So these bolts, this one up here and then this one further up, these bolts actually connect the fender to your so those two bolts are actually what connect the fender onto the car very firmly, along with a bunch of little clips underneath on the inside, but that we're not going to worry about. So these bolts actually look very clean. Now what you want to look for when you're looking at fender bolts is you want to look around them. So don't be afraid to get your hands a little bit dirty, maybe bring a rag, but this bolt right here, you can tell it has never been moved, not only because the paint on the bolt is still very, very, very clean and mint, but around it, you don't see any circle dirt marks around that indicates that this bolt has been wiggling around and trying to come out so this is a very very good sign that this fender has not been replaced but has only been repainted so next we're going to look at the hood bolts because it was reading the same thing as the fender and the hood bolts you're going to want to look over here there's two bolts right inside here and there's two more on the other side that look exactly like these ones so what you want to look for is again the same thing are the bolts touched are they do they look like they've been tampered with in any way shape or form if you see paint peeling off of all four bolts that indicates that it has been replaced and now sometimes you'll see only two bolts affected and the other two look mint. and now what that means is the, the previous owner actually got the hood realigned and adjusted so it doesn't mean that the hood's replaced but it just means that they the fitment of the hood wasn't exactly right so they they took off the bolts off one side to kind of jostle it around and make it fit a little more flush with the rest of the car so with that being said the next thing you're going to want to check just for your own sake is the oil now it's it's usually going to have a nice bright color as the dipstick and for a lot of times it'll also say engine or oil on it or it'll have a little picture on it um, and you're just going to want to take that out. Make sure you have a rag with you. Unfortunately, I didn't bring one. If you really want, you can wipe it right up here on the car. But if you're going to go buy a car, I wouldn't recommend you do that because oil can be some very dirty stuff. But this is under the hood of a 2004. So it shouldn't be a big problem. So once you get it off clean, make sure the car is off, of course. Put it back in. And take it back out. This is going to give you the exact oil level of the oil that's in your car and not only do you want to see the level it has to be below this dot this is usually the maximum line dot and this is the minimum if it's below this the car needs an oil change or at least a top up and if it's above this then you don't have to worry too much but it does mean that the, the, they did put a little bit more oil in the vehicle which isn't the biggest issue however it can force the car to have leaks underneath um, what else you want to look for is the color of the oil. Now, in most cases, if the oil is new and fresh, it'll be this color. So this is actually really good oil. I'm assuming that my friend here got an oil change very recently because this oil looks very clean, very loose, and very ready to cause some damage. Now, if the oil is very dark or close to black, that means that the oil is burnt and dirty and needs to be changed. So this could also give you an indication or a little bit of an idea as to how the previous owners treated their car. If the oil's clean, you know that they maybe possibly kept it up on maintenance and kept it clean throughout the duration of the car. However, if they're a little bit of a sly one, they could just have gotten an oil change done before having people look at the car. So I do want to point out that if you are buying a turbocharged vehicle or one with GDI, which is gasoline direct injection, then the oil is going to be 
then the oil is going to appear to be darker than normal and that's because of how those engines work with their fuel injectors and stuff like that so don't worry too much if the oil is a little bit dark on a turbocharged or gasoline direct injection vehicle with that being said our oil on our car is good and good to go we found out that the fender is only repainted and not replaced the same thing for the hood it's actually repainted and not replaced just to double check i'm going to use my fingers and feel the edges here again now you could feel any edge of it just try not to go too much to the front because sometimes the grill or the molding will actually bend over to the front and that's going to give you a false reading so make sure you feel here make sure it's nice and smooth this one is a little bit rough and that is again because it is repainted so you don't want to get mixed up between a rough paint job and little chips and dings that are in the hood um, because that sometimes it could make you it could really throw you off so what I would suggest is if you have family members or friends go to their cars and just start feeling the paint tell them you're not going to be uh, damaging it again you are rubbing your finger very lightly on it so just let them know show them this video if you want and you know tell them to practice with you get your finger skills really good because then you won't even need the paint gauge at all so next we're going to move on to this fender which we already established is reading fine we're just going to look at the bolts either way because again if the if the panel has been replaced you won't be able to tell that by reading it with the paint gauge the paint gauge is just going to read it as a normal panel because if something's been replaced a lot of times it's by the factory and the factory paints the part themselves and if they're painting it they also painted the rest of the car so the rest is going to match the rest of the car meaning you have to check the bolts regardless so we're going to look at the bolts here again one down here the other one up here and these two look even more mint than the others so we could say that this fender is completely good and we're ready to move on now while we're at this fender i'm going to go ahead and take the time to bring out our next tool and that is the tread depth checker i don't exactly know the exact term off the top of my head but it's fairly simple what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to push this top part all the way down so that the needle point is sticking at its outmost position next you're going to put it into the second okay not the first set of tread but the second groove here and you're gonna push it all the way down so now it's gonna give you a number reading and this number that we got here you're gonna go to the closest number that it matches to me that looks like it is seven so this tire this right front tire has seven thirty seconds of tread left now 32 is the maximum that any tread I believe could achieve so most brand new tires that you buy for your typical SUV or your typical Honda Civic, the maximum amount of tread that they'll actually have on them is 11 out of 32 or 11 slash 32. And that's maximum tread, that's a brand new tire. So having seven out of 32 is actually pretty good. It's right in the middle of the least that you wanna have and the most that you can have, which is again, 11, 12 ish. So seven I would say is good. If your tires are in seven condition, um, or if your tread rather is 7 out of 32, you're looking pretty good. That means that you still could use those tires for another year or two, depending on if they're all seasons, summers, or winters. If you guys want to see a video on how to tell the difference between different types of tires or anything tire related, be sure to let me know in the comment section below and I'll get a video out to you guys as soon as I can. So after we check that tire, what we can do and what you should be doing for all tires is obviously checking the tread, but for the sake of length, I'm trying to speed through some of these things a little bit. Um, but we also got our, our PSI gauge out now and this is actually going to tell us how much air is in these tires so you can also tell a little bit by how much this part looks like it's bulging out if it looks like it's pretty healthy and standing up firmly then chances are that the air inside of these tires are pretty good but regardless you still want to double check it because if these are low profile tires they're not going to have a bulge <laughs> they're not going to have a bulge regardless so let's go ahead and check these tires real quick here you're just gonna open up the valve stem cap put it on and it's gonna give you a reading so these are at 20 23 and a half psi which i could tell you is pretty damn low so that's quite unfortunate for my friend he's gonna have to go put some some air in these tires after this video because it could be very dangerous if you're driving without the recommended amount of pressure in your tires so while we're on the topic of tires, come with me over to the driver's side. Something I forgot to show you guys in the beginning, or actually I referred to in the beginning, is to not worry about remembering what each car's tire pressure should be at because you can find it on any vehicle on the driver's side sill. So if you look down here, you can see all the information 
you can see all the information that is needed for the tire, whether it's cold tire inflation pressure or just regular pressure. And if you look closely here, it says 30 PSI for both uh, the fronts and the rears, as well as for both winter and normal. So 30 PSI is where my friend's tire should be, and his was at about 23 and a half. So that's a pretty big discrepancy. Anything of about two to two and a half discrepancy is nothing to worry about. Just maybe top them up on you if you eventually do end up buying the car. But if it's anything like this, maybe the previous owner didn't exactly know how to take care of his car or just simply chose not to. Let's head back over to the other side. All right, so back onto the right side of the vehicle. We're gonna go ahead and check the right door, right front door. Scan that, that's giving us a nice five reading, which is kind of, again, what we wanna see. But just because I wanna keep the practice going, feel it with my finger, feels brand spanking new. And now we're also gonna check these tough to see bolts in here and they look completely fine. So those bolts look good, paint feels good, paint's reading fine. That means we can move on to the next panel. Right rear door, four. Now, this could be scary. It's still within a close range, but when you see a panel that's below what the roof is, you, you definitely make sure, you definitely wanna make sure you check out that panel because it could be replaced because if they got this door completely replaced, the paint coat might not be as high as the rest of the vehicle. So with that being said, I'm not, I'm not gonna feel it for if it's been repainted. I'm just gonna go straight to the bolts on this one and make sure that they're okay. Now come in to see these bolts over here because I want you to see what a lot of the bolts on the cars that I inspect look like. So if you see those bolts, they're actually very greasy and kind of hard to see. The bottom ones look the same, but that's kind of the, that's kind of the idea with some bolts. You're not going to be able to necessarily tell if they look repainted or touched all the time. Sometimes they're going to have a lot of grease on them, and that's usually okay. So this door is completely fine. Had a little bit of a scare, but it's good to know that the bolts look all intact. Turn it off. So now that we got that door out of the way, we're going to move on to the right quarter panel. Again, scan it, hold it on, let it be. This one, we got a nice 4.5 rating. We're still gonna seal it with our finger just to make sure. Um, it feels a little bit rough, but that's okay. It's a 2004 vehicle. But this one, I gotta say, and I gotta be honest, not only because it's my friend's car, but straight up, this car is in very good condition for a 2004 vehicle. I see a lot of, a lot of bad cars that are even 2018, 2019. Um, again, I could rant on about that, but that's for another video. For this one, let's go ahead and get this car done with. So we're gonna move on to the lift gate now if you're driving a vehicle a car it's going to be a deck lid if you're driving a SUV it's going to be a lift gate if you're driving a truck it's going to be a, a, a truck bed all right so as you can see this trunk got a nice five rating which is pretty consistent with all the other panels that we scanned that have not been repaired or replaced and so what you're still going to want to do is you're going to want to lift it up open her up and we're going to check these lift gate bolts so they're usually right here on lift gates and two more on the left side so these ones although dirty i could clearly see that they've never been touched the paint reads fine i'll go ahead and feel my nail anyway again you're going to go to the edge kind of use the side between your nail and finger you're not going to put it in there but you're just going to rub it along there and kind of get a good a good feeling of the paint this one feels brand spanking new so safe to say that the trunk has not been replaced so with that being said, we can move on to the left side of the vehicle and get this one wrapped up. I know it's been a long video, but there's been a lot of information to share in this video. And there's still a lot of information that I actually left out. So we scan this one, beautiful 4.5. Don't really even have to worry about this panel, except we kind of do because it might be replaced and we never know that. And the last panel of this vehicle is gonna be the left rear door. Now this one, we got another scare on our hands. It's reading a four. And if you guys remember, the roof was reading 4.5, so a four is below the roof, which means we should definitely check to see if it's been replaced, which means we're checking the bolts. So if we come in here, if you come in there and you look at those bolts, sure, they're a little bit dirty, but just like the other side, they are mint. And with that being said, my friend's car seems to be in pretty tip-top shape for a 2004. There's only been two panels on this vehicle that have been repainted, that being the left fender and the hood. So if a vehicle is being advertised to you as having no, da no accidents or no damages, and you find something like a left fender and a hood uh, repaired, 
then you could kind of use that to your advantage if you still even want to pursue that vehicle. You could let them know that you've been trained or you have experience in finding damages in vehicles and let them know that those two panels are in fact repainted and they might if they're the original owner of the car or if they're the ones that have even gotten the panels repainted they might either admit to it like oh yeah they might have been the previous owner blah 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 and that you could use that to your advantage to haggle the price down even lower to something that suits you and something that kind of is more fair for the vehicle so the reason why i even wanted to make this video is just to inform everyone when they're making their used car buying decisions because it's a rough world out there and a lot of people are trying to get a little more extra dollars than they probably should be charging for their vehicles all right guys and with that being said this has been how to properly inspect your vehicle visually so if you guys want to see a future video on how to inspect your vehicle mechanically like what sort of sounds to listen for what to look for in the engine bay things of that nature then let me know in the comment section right below that like button and if you guys are wondering this is my buddy will here who actually owns this vehicle is passed down to him from his mother so shout out to him for allowing me to do this video on him and his vehicle shout out to you friend and with that being said i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i hope you guys more importantly found it informative that's all for this time guys peace